What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to another Road Reflection. Boy, am I having a fucking afternoon. Uh, obviously, it's pre-recorded, so if you're watching this, this is this is recorded in the past, and you're watching this in the future, but... Uh, locked myself out of the house, forgot my fucking keys and wallet. Fortunately, my car keys are kept separate. Uh, and I was, like, rushing out the door because I was taking notes... And I had to shower, and I had to do some housework, and I had to pick up prescriptions. And it was like a very large, I guess it was more stuff to do than I had time to do, and I barely made it through. And of course, as I'm rushing out the fucking door, I left all this shit in the house and locked myself out of the house. Uh, so I was like trying to figure out a way to get around, and I have to tell my girlfriend that I'm running late, because I'm like leaving her <laughs> up to shift and stuff, and like... What a fucking afternoon, you guys. It's it's gonna be... I Like, the day was going okay, because I was getting stuff done. I was, like, making, you know, I was on the move and stuff, and I was doing all right. But fucking hell, like, in an instant, this shit can go completely south. And so I'm hoping, you know, I, like, it'll be fine. Um, you know, like, I can't... Ho like, hopefully I don't need anything on the way there or back home, uh, cause that'll be fucking shitty. Uh, so, sorry if I'm a little frazzled, I still wanted to get this out there, uh, because, uh, I, you know, I want to talk about a few things that I don't think mainstream corporate media is going to really talk about, uh, which is, which is the point of these, these little rants in my car. Um, but before we before we get get started, I do want to do a quick, uh, quick quick check in. I, I I did those a whole lot over the summer when I would do these live streams, just check in to see how we were doing on a day to day basis. And and I you know I I always invite people to 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 talk about what's going on with them if if they feel like doing it, if they feel like if they feel comfortable doing it. Uh, I, but you know I'm I'm still sort of in a pretty pretty weird funk. Um, like a depressive funk, so it's, it takes a, it sucks because I, I really want to put this stuff out, I really want to do the work and create the content, um, I have a new design, th uh, job that I'm working, uh, part-time as well, and I want to do all these things, and it was really difficult to, and I think the peak of it was the last two weeks, uh, where I just felt like shit. Uh, I didn't feel like I was really contributing to anything, and, uh, you know, I, and fortunately, I had a doctor's appointment, I went to the doctor, and they said that, and I was finally able to, like, get a therapist, uh, my, my regular therapist is MIA at the moment, I can't get a hold of him, which is, I guess, fine, um, but, uh, I, I'm getting, you know, I, I've got, made another appointment, I'm, I've got my OMT back on track, uh, I'm, I'm taking some, uh, you know, regular vitamins, I'm trying to work out a lot, as much as I was over the summer, um, and, and try to pull myself out of this funk, and try to, like, get back on the point where I can do the work that I want to do, uh, at the pace that I would like to do the work, you know what I mean? Like, I want to feel good about the things that I'm doing, um, instead of feeling like shit, and very hesitant, um, and very unsure about, um, you know, whatever. Like, I, I, that, that's part of the thing that I've kind of felt is, I, uh, there's no motivation, um, uh, my sleep is being affected, like, there's some nights where I can't fall asleep, and there's some nights where I'll just, like, randomly wake up in the middle of the night, and then it'll be impossible for me to get to sleep. Uh, my appetite was pretty wonky. Like, today is not bad. Today I feel like my appetite is pretty, pretty good. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm also trying to, like, wake up a little bit earlier to, to incorporate, um, like, a regular exercise regimen. So I, like, told all this stuff to my doctor, and she was like, okay, it could be, like, like, vitamins could be affecting that. But, like, talking to people, talking to somebody so that you can, like, externalize some of this stuff that's going on with you will help. Um, 
and she was also like CBD is is good like it, 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 it might help it's just like unfortunately I can't prescribe it because you know insurance and America being America uh, so that's that's on the docket there um, but we're also trying to like do some stuff for, for the house and do some stuff but with getting out of the studio so it's a bit of a crazy stressful week um, that we're gonna we're gonna face here so uh, yeah kind of sucks that <laughs> that it's a crazy stressful week and that I fucking forgot like the keys thing is still so dumb to me it's so fucking stupid to me that I that I fucking did that and I, and I got and I made myself late too that's the other thing that really sucks is like uh, I made myself late and I'm also like at a point where it's like, all right, I gotta, I, I, hopefully I can get through all this fucking trafficy bullshit and get there relatively on time. Uh, and but not only that, like I also don't want this video to be cut short because of all of that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, stress, depressed, anxious, all those things are riding on high, and I'm trying to maintain them to the best of my abilities. Okay, Mister, that's fucking great. I love that the, this truck just tried to, like, run me off the road just to merge. Like, it just couldn't take its fucking time to merge. Uh, that's cool. But, anyway, uh, yeah, so, so as far as the check-in goes, like, th and, and things are, like, good, right, on a relative basis. Like, things are good. My relationship is good. I had a really good birthday. Uh, you know, like, people, people are, are, are pretty good in, in turn, like, I, I had a really great, uh, weekend, I was on the Action for Assange show, uh, with Gordon Dimmick, and we had a really nice two-hour chat about, uh, the election, uh, the Assange trial, uh, what's going on with journalism, and all that stuff, so I was very excited about that, I got, uh, you know, I was able to play some D&D, &D, uh, so... There, but again, it's like the there's that background noise of existential dread that constant that, that'll just randomly pop up, um, and, and maybe that's because of, uh, of of the fact that we're in resurgence of things. I'm not touring as much. It doesn't seem like I'm going to be back on the road anytime soon, um, and I and I feel like people are just becoming more uh, volatile and. Uh, I don't know. I think the existential dread and then this personal dread of me not feeling like I'm doing enough and me not feeling like I'm doing anything worthwhile is is also probably causing the depression and stuff to pop up. Um, so and and, I, and and the and the keys thing is it, like today was just like I was like oh cool like I'm I'm kind of feeling okay. I know I'm rushing a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, you know, like there was a lot to do. Uh, one or two things that I didn't anticipate on doing today. And then, uh, and then as I'm leaving the door, I'm like, hmm, something is missing. And it's because I'm a fucking moron and forgot my bag with my keys and my wallet and, uh, all, you know, my masks and stuff. I have a backup mask in the car just in case, uh, I, I, I do, I do leave a backup mask in the car as a, as a just in case precaution. I should probably leave another one because it's, it's a, it's a, a little bit of an, uh, older mask and I don't, I don't particularly think that's, that's awesome, but... Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's what I have for the moment, so I should probably leave one of my cloth masks in here as a backup, uh, instead, uh, but live and learn, I guess, live and learn. Anyway, uh, that's the check-in, I'm gonna try to, to stay focused on, on talking about the topics at hand here today. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, so, just had the elections wrap up, uh, some, a lot of people impatient, even though we knew what was coming down the pipeline, we knew that there was a bipartisan effort uh, to, to, to defund the post office, um, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the mail-in ballots weren't going to be counted until election day. Uh, we knew that Trump was going to interfere. Uh, we knew, we know all this stuff. This stuff was, I mean, none of the, so I don't understand why people were like, oh my God, I can't believe it's taking so long. Nevada, get to it. Pennsylvania, get to it. Blah, blah, blah. And then it's it's also like, hey, uh, you know these are just fucking people counting these ballots, right? Maybe give them a little bit. You know? These are, these are volunteers. Uh, 
And don't you want like a like a fair election? Don't you think people should like do what it takes to make it a fair election, to double check, to make sure that the votes are counted properly, to make sure that people's uh, people's you know right to vote is 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 uh, upheld? And other countries take a couple days to fucking tally up their votes. But in America, it's like, we gotta get it all done in a day! If it's not done in a day, then America will explode! It's just like, have a little patience. There's 350 million people in this country. A lot of people are gonna try to vote. It's not like, you know... And, and, and on top of that, then you, know, then you have the Electoral College to deal with as well. Uh, so... Which is just an antiquated system that needs to be taken out. But uh, they finally got to it uh, uh, right as the weekend <laughs> rolled around. Uh, and, and Biden crossed the 270. Uh, and uh, I mean, but it was close though. A lot of the, I think a lot of the races were close. In Pennsylvania, the big, the big one that everybody was paying attention to was Connor Lamb versus Sean Parnell. Uh, and, you know, Parnell's kind of your... He's, he's a younger-looking dude. Uh, you know, veteran. Uh, family guy. You know, all the check boxes for being a fucking Republican. He checks them off. Uh, but, you know, he he's not for the ACA. He's not for Medicare for All. He's not for defunding the police. And looking at community initiatives to build a better law enforcement... A better, more precise law enforcement agency... Uh, that that serves the community rather than being a blunt instrument to use against the community. Uh, you know, he, he's just your classic fucking Republican conservative, and he's backed by Trump. Now, Connor Lamb won, but just barely. I, I mean, I, I feel like it was very similar to uh, Trump and Biden where it was like one or two points off and it took a while to get all those counts in. Uh, and, you know, for for candidates that claim that they're that diametrically uh, opposite, it should mean that there is just a blowout in that term, right? Like, like if the Democrats keep claiming that they are the party of the people and they are they are the good guys in all of this and they're, you know, uh, upholding the rights of uh, all American citizens and all that stuff, then, again, it should have been a blowout. There shouldn't have been a 2% razor-thin margin between any of these fucking candidates. Uh... The reason there was is probably because, and this is purely conjecture on my part, but I would wager to say that that a lot of people dis were disenfranchised by both parties and uh, felt like they really didn't have a candidate, and they were like, fuck it, I'll just go with the other guy, or I'll go with this other person that, you know, they went against a party that, that they felt like disenfranchised them. There was probably a good chunk of people that did that. Right, because it, the, the Democrats were making the the argument. Well, this is uh, th this is this is a bullshit. We're going up against a fascist, and the other side was like, well, this is bullshit. You're going up against a socialist, which is that part's not true. The fascist part is, but so is Joe Biden. I mean, Joe Biden is a crypto fascist versus a outright blatant fascist, right? So, so so Biden wins. And nothing is fundamentally going to change. He already kind of fucking said that. Uh, and there was all this celebration. And that's cool. Like, you can celebrate like, Trump leaving office, but there's not much else to celebrate, right? Like, the, 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 the most bombastic fucking asshole president that, uh, uh, that America's ever seen is, is leaving office. And that's the only thing that we have to celebrate like we didn't celebrate uh we, didn't, we we couldn't celebrate medicare for all because biden's not going to bring medicare for all we didn't celebrate 
the defunding the police and moving the civil rights movement forward because Biden doesn't support any of that. He, he's the reason why we have police brutality to the level that we have police brutality. He's the reason why we have mass incarceration to the level that we have it now. So is Kamala Harris. We'll talk about that in a bit. So the needle n didn't really move. It's just, oh man, this representation of America uh, that was this fucking overweight, drug-addled, kind of lunatic narcissist is out of office, and now we have uh, a, 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 uh, a dementia patient that kind of says things nicely until you criticize him, and then he gets real shitty and starts spouting things like your old racist grandpa does. Uh, well, I guess that's better? Uh, yay! You can celebrate Trump being out of office, but let's not go crazy. That should have been like, just fucking having a drink, right? You're just like, fucking A. Uh, <laughs> like what I will do later this evening. Uh, because I locked myself out of the fucking house and, and, and you know, running late to the side gig that I'm doing. Uh, I, I will pour myself a drink and like, take a sigh of relief that I'm home after this fucking really shitty thing. But that doesn't mean that everything is done. I still have a bunch of shit I gotta get done at home. And that's the next part about this, right? Everybody was like, I know there's work to be done, but like, let me have this moment. And it's like, that's fine, but this moment can't last four years. And that's the big concern that a lot of people on my side have that the progressive socialist lefties have is that this is going to last for four years. That it's going to be four years of brunch. Four years of this is not the time to criticize the Democrats. Really, what we celebrated, or quote unquote we, what, what, what the, the staunch Democrats and the big Biden supporters celebrated was, you know, the victory of a neoliberal Republican rather than a neo-fascist Republican. Yay! We got crypto-fascism in the White House. But the Senate and the House still, you know, and just barely, too. Like, we're, we're, we're fucking fighting a just barely argument. What does, I mean, the, oh, really, I think this is the epitome of breadcrumbing for the American people from the, from the Democratic Party. Like, this is the Democratic Party basically proving to themselves and to the American people that they don't really have to try worth the deal. Um, you know, like, they just don't have to try. And you can look and go back to, uh, you can probably go back to Daddy Bush and Reagan, right? Like, the, Daddy Bush and Reagan were awful, that you had someone that was slightly less awful, Clinton. Bill Clinton was an old charmer, you know, talked real smart, he had, a, he had that southern drawl, he was folksy. And people liked him because he was not this former CIA wannabe strongman that's gonna get us into wars and do all you know uh, and, and do and lie about all these things to enrich himself and his family and so on and so forth. He's not part of some dynasty, um, you know. So then you got Clinton, and after Clinton, you had Bush. Bush. Bush the kid, right? Uh, Bush the kid. It makes him sound like a fucking... I know he'd love this analogy, but it, it makes him sound like an old fucking cowboy. Uh, which I guess is kind of apt. <laughs> but you... But And then, you know... Baby Bush... Baby Bush was such a fucking travesty with how... With 9-11 and starting the Iraq War and the Afghanistan... Uh, the war in Afghanistan and the war on terror 
Uh, and he became such a fucking joke and buffoon uh, to basically make America look like a country of buffoons. That the next thing, the next candidate that the Democrats threw up was Barack Obama, who was this young, debonair, first-term senator, right? Ran on this fucking hope and change message. Got a lot of us excited. They were like, look, we're, we're ready to put black people in a leadership position. Yay! And I mean, I was fucking psyched for that shit. I was in college when that was happening, right? And, um... I was very excited about it, and I thought it was it was great, and uh, and he turned out to be an incredible, massive disappointment. And and I mean, every excuse in the book was levied to Obama. Well, he had a Republican Congress. He had an uh, he had a lot of opposition. He was the first black guy. We should cut him some slack. He he's he was a first term senator. He he did his best. He did what he could, uh, and and. That is all okay to a certain degree, but you can't ignore the, ch- the 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 harm that he did. You can't ignore it. You have to hold him accountable for it. But they didn't because at least he wasn't Baby Bush. At least he wasn't bad as that administration. And then we got Trump, and Trump again carried that same cycle that we've seen for the last 30 years minimum of American politics where the Republicans put basically some uh, 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 what Cornell West calls a neo-fascist gangster uh, and they put him up and he's so fucking terrible on civil rights and he's so terrible uh, on, on all these things and he's bombastic and he makes a fool of himself all the time and, and the whole world looks down upon America and they go what a fucking bunch of buffoons And now, they didn't even, they were just like, what if we just gave him another old guy that's just incrementally, just slightly better? That isn't going to go on national television and tell people to inject themselves with Lysol. That maybe might not make fun of mentally handicapped people on national television. But he still stands for all the wars. He still stands for uh, the the uh, uh, tilted criminal justice system. He still stands for Wall Street and the banking industry. He still stands for the pharmaceutical industry and the insurance companies. That gets just as angry and aggressive when you criticize him as the other guy. But he's just a little bit better. Because he sounds good. He sounds more academic. That's all the Democrats have to do at this point. Nancy Pelosi might just be a little teensy bit better than Mitch McConnell. But hey, she fucking applauded Guan Guaido. And she applauded the coup at... America wanted to to do in in Venezuela that, you know, hilariously backfired. These people, you know, they've just figured out that all they need is someone microscopically better. And the American people will be so terrified and disgusted that they will will take that microscopic breadcrumb and just... And that's kind of what we've been doing in terms of voting. And they make this big hoopla that voting is the biggest and best thing that you can do when in reality it's, it's, the, it's, it's literally the least thing that you can do to participate in politics at all. And then they encourage you not to talk about politics or issues or policy or anything that's going on, uh, you know, amongst your, your peers and your family. And part of the way, I mean, we're not fucking educated uh, to talk about that stuff at all, right? Like, most of our education system is about memorization, not about critical thinking. So we don't know how to have these conversations. Like, when you were a kid, you weren't allowed to participate in those conversations. You weren't allowed to 
uh, to to take part in 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 intelligent discourse that was left to the adults. But if you watch, I mean, if we were kids and watching the adults do it, it was it would probably be embarrassing because the adults were probably just arguing each other and calling each other bastards and cunts anyway. So it would have been a joke. So there are, there really isn't an example of real political discourse anywhere. So we have to make our own example of real political discourse. And we will. And we will. But if you want electoral change, right? Like if you want the if you want um, our election process to be better, if you want better candidates to be uh, put on these large, you know, bigger political stages, then you're going to need systemic change, or else they're going to keep breadcrumbing us with microscopically incremental better fascists. You're going to have to fight for systemic change. Start with fighting for more parties. If, 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 if fucking electoral politics is your bag, then fight for more parties, man. You should be fighting for third parties to get 100% ballot access. You should, get, you should be fighting for the Green Party, for the Libertarians, the Constitutional Party, the Movement for a People's Party, all to be getting the same ele- level of ballot access as Democrats and Republicans, as well as getting on the debate stage, as well as getting pu- uh, public funding to get, to get on television, to know who these, who these people are on a national stage, and get their voice out there and get some recognition. If, if that is not part of your fight and you say that electoral politics and voting is the, is the greatest and best thing you can do for politics, then you're just talking out of your ass and you're, 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 not, you're not doing anything more than, uh, than throwing platitudes out there like the Democrats are. If you're not talking about the Green Party, if you're not talking about the Movement for a People's Party or the Libertarians or whatever it is, or mentioning that third parties, you know, deserve the same level of uh, ballot access, the same level of national recognition as the Democrats and Republicans, then, then you don't really care about real democracy. That's the, I, I'm sorry to be harsh about it, but that's the harsh truth about it. This is the time now that we have to that we have to stand behind movements and not parties. That's the reality. It's got to be about movements, not parties. And this is something else that we need to get get used to. Is uh, hey, Trump's not going away. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm sorry if you thought that this was the end of Trump. If if I'm the fucking if if I'm if I I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news about this thing, guys, but. Let's let's really be honest about ourselves here. Do you really think that dude is get like leaving the realm of American politics? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, what's going to happen? And this is already sort of happening. I, I I saw it happen on on Friday before before uh, Biden was even announced the winner. Is uh, Tucker Carlson went on this tirade? about how Biden is going to make everybody drink Starbucks and that's it and everybody has to do the same thing all the time and our freedom of choice is gone because socialism and it's like okay Tucker I know you're an intelligent human being Uh, you you might be wrong but I don't think you're dumb Um, I think you're a propagandist and I think you're propagandizing what socialism is and then you're equating it with the Democratic Party which is just a neoliberal crypto fascist party anyway so it's not all that different from the party that you worship uh, but it, it, in that sense, fucking, he's going to become the new Rachel Maddow. He's the one that's going to start talking about, uh, you know, fucking election fraud and how the Democrats rigged the rigged the generals and all this other shit. And mail-in ballots are going to become the new Russia gate. And I would not be surprised if Trump got a segment on his show um, either semi-weekly or at least, or, or, I mean, every day. I wouldn't be surprised, right? And then I wouldn't be surprised if the other networks wanted to cash in on that. 
And MSNBC got, you know, Morning Joe gets a, a Trump segment. And fucking Anderson Cooper gets a Trump segment. Where they go on and they and, and Trump gets to keep being this bombastic, narcissistic shit windbag. Blowing hot air. Continuing to galvanize his base. And the corporate media ain't gonna do shit to fucking stop that from happening. Why? Because corporate media doesn't really care. Uh, to corporate media, they're making money, and they're profiting off of it, and that's all they really care about. They're not a... They're, corporate media isn't about journalism. Corporate media is about entertainment. It's a reality show. Much like American politics is theater, uh corporate journalism in America is a reality television show. And every so, every four, four to eight years, we get a new big breakout reality star. Sean Hannity under Obama, uh, Rachel Maddow under Trump, and, I, and my prediction is Tucker Carlson under Biden. So... That's what's coming up down the pipeline that I think we need to keep an eye out for. Um, you know, what, what, what the, the work that needs to be done is not pushing fucking Joe Biden to the left. It's actually supporting the left. Joe Biden's not going to support the left. He's already come out and said that. He's going to veto Medicare for all. He's not going to defund the police. He's not going to ban fracking. He's going to, quote, unquote, listen to scientists, but only to uh, for to put on a mask mandate out there for people, which is fine. I think people should be wearing masks right now. And I and if you're going to go and sit at a fucking bar or whatever, like especially now, that's a horrible thing to do. But if you're going to go grocery shopping, if you're going to visit grandma and so on and so forth, wear a fucking mask, right? Be careful. Be safe out there. Socially distance. Do all those things. Uh, and, and the unfortunate thing is, uh, do I think a mask mandate is is a good idea? Eh, probably not. But there's so much opposition and this has become such a political and divisive issue uh, and it's now come down to a safety concern that a mask mandate is probably what's needed in order to get people to be like, yeah, this is what fucking needs to be done to rein this all in and, your fr and, and you know what? The coronavirus doesn't give a shit about your fucking freedom. Anyway. So that's what's coming down the pipeline. Um, I did a Twitter thread about the real work that needs to be done. Uh, that's available up on my website. I'm putting up uh, new feature tweets uh, of the week if you want to go look at that. Uh, but it's talking about uh, a lot of the stuff that uh, that the progressive left, uh, the socialist left, really believes in and is fighting for. And, uh, and it's basically shit that you know Joe Biden is not fighting for. And instead of trying to push him to the left, we the people should just be taking on these issues and making them happen in our community. The Black Panthers did it without government support and then influenced the government to take on those things. So uh, we need to do it first and we need to be on the ground floor to do that. All right, uh, before I run out of time, I do want to get into this second story because it's an important one. Uh, Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris, everybody's championing her as the first woman of color to be the Vice President of the United States. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, identity politics aside, uh, I'm all for uh, people of color getting uh, better positions in politics and entertainment and so on and so forth. But I do believe that your character has something to do with it. Your record, your your policies have something to do with it too. It is nice that we have a woman of color as, as the vice president now, but uh, is she the right woman of color when she has such a torrid past, when she has such a terrible criminal justice record? And she does. Her criminal justice record is uh, wildly horrific. It's one of the worst criminal justice records um, around. Um, so let's let's go through it. It's it's corrupt and detrimental to the uh, to to the American people, and has been corrupt and uh, uh, detrimental to the American people. And and she stuck by it, just like Joe Biden is stuck by his corrupt and broken, detrimental criminal justice system. Um, so so let's go through it, right? She she laughed about legalizing marijuana when she was asked 
uh, about legalizing marijuana. She laughed about it, so she, she really doesn't have any intent on actually fully legalizing marijuana, which is probably what's needed in a lot of states to get some tax revenue so that the states can do, uh, give money to the American people because the federal government's not really fucking doing that. Uh, she put truant, uh, the, the mothers of truant kids in prison for, for the act of truancy, right? So instead of talking to kids about why they were skipping school and why they were being truant, um, and maybe trying to reform the education system, maybe getting some better mental health support into the education system, uh, no, let's punish the mothers and create uh, uh, more, more people to go into the prison industrial complex so that she can profit off of people going to prison. Um, that is something that she did that she has uh, not really made a statement about or uh, done anything legislatively about. Uh, made poverty a crime with exorbitant bails in a state that's already way too expensive to live in. Uh, she has, uh, her department would uh, lose evidence to keep more people in prison, lose evidence uh, to, to, to uh, you know, uh, to keep innocent people in prison. She laughed about a man on death row. Uh, you know, this is not a good person. And, th and, and Tulsi Gabbard laid the smack down in one of the debates that I think uh, basically took her out of the running to become uh, the first woman of color president. And again, I think it should be the right woman of color, a woman of color that does represent and does want progressive policies to be put into place. And again, Kamala Harris is not that person because Kamala Harris couldn't even figure out whether she was or was not for Medicare for All, which now that she's part of the Biden administration, she is unequivocally not for Medicare for All. She will not pass it. She will not champion it. She will not fight for it. Uh, she had smart on crime, right? Smart on crime was a big thing. That's basically the new tough on crime. Uh, it sounds nicer. Again, it sounds nicer, but it's basically tough on crime. Three strikes, you're out. Uh, that's not really reforming the criminal justice system. That's, that's a PR spin. Uh, on the criminal justice system to make it sound less racist, to make it sound less shitty, but that's basically what she did. Uh, she made it. She made it sound and, and look more pleasant than than what it was. Right? Who who doesn't want to be smart on crime instead of being tough on crime? Um, police body cameras. She didn't require cops to wear police body cameras, uh, which now is is a major issue that she has been on the wrong side of. Uh, historically speaking. Um, now, uh, she has come around and, and said that she wants medical marijuana to be legal, but she won't say anything to legalize marijuana fully. I think it, all drugs need to be legalized, and we need to be educated on what these drugs do and how they react with our body, and we need to put up centers where people can safely try these drugs uh, under the, the care and supervision of a professional so that you can experience this drug and say, oh, okay, maybe this is not something I want to try. Um, and, and, you know, create a better populace that way. Uh, there's a lot of mental health purposes for, for things like psychedelics that I think, it, it, you know, is, is missed in our society right now. But this is the, this is the big one, right? Uh, so the Indian community is pretty miffed at Kamala Harris because she doesn't really, um, uphold her Indian heritage. She doesn't really talk about it. She doesn't really care about it. She doesn't really put it into the public light. She c considers herself black. And then this is not me saying, uh, oh, she should be more Indian than black. No, this is me saying being Indian is part of your heritage and, and you should accept it and you should flaunt it as much as you do uh, your blackness, right? Your, your, your blackness and your Indianness should, should be on equal footing when it comes to you being a biracial politician, when you, should, when you are a biracial woman of color politician. Now, a lot of Indian people are, are miffed about this because they feel taken advantage of. They feel like the only, the only time she spoke about being Indian was when she wanted uh, South Asian votes. And I've seen a lot of people make that comment. And particularly the Sikh community, she has been really, really terrible to. Uh, so there was a gentleman by the name of uh, Trilachan Oberoi, who was a, 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 a Sikh gentleman uh, who was a navy, he was a navy officer, he wanted to be a corrections officer. He applied for the job, but he got denied twice because he wouldn't shave his beard for gas mask fittings. Right? Uh, Sikhs keep their beard 
for religious purposes. So to him, him saying, I can't shave my beard because of my religion, and them saying, well, we can't have you be a part of this correction facility was religious persecution. He filed, and as the DA, she said that uh, Mr. Oberoi should not get the job because he's not willing to do what it takes uh, and we should ignore his religion um, and you know and this is a big thing because the Sikhs have uh, constantly been uh, taken advantage of they have constantly been uh, persecuted and oppressed even in India they're they're not particularly treated well and and what Kamala Harris did was kind of in line with that. It's, it's this continual persecution of the Sikhs. It's this continual misunderstanding of the Sikhs. And this is a double slap in the face for the Indian community. Because not only is she, is she ignoring slash denying her Indian heritage, but now she's got this record of essentially, once again, uh, pushing back against. She she was against someone that was part of her own community. That's not to say that she hasn't let the black community down because she has with her criminal justice record. She 100% has. But the Sikhs don't feel like they're being represented by this woman. And here's the thing. She has not talked about this. She hasn't mentioned this. She hasn't apologized for it. And she hasn't come out legislatively to correct these things. Tulsi Gabbard did. Tulsi Gabbard made various statements uh, saying that she was ignorant about the plight of the LGBTQ community. And then she legislated on behalf of the LGBTQ community to reduce the amount of discrimination that they face. Uh, Kamala Harris has no intention of doing that. And that is, uh, that is an absolute fact because she has not legislated to change her criminal justice record. She has not come out and apologized to the communities that she has disrupted and destroyed in so many different ways. So once again, they're not interested in moving to the left. So I think it, it becomes on us to, to, as a society, move to the left as a society and as a community to come together and, uh, and, and they will follow suit because there will be too many of us changing the paradigm of the way that we live our lives and they will have to follow suit uh, on an oligarchical uh, legislative level. Uh, all right, we're going to bring this uh, video to a close here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for uh, paying attention, tuning in, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, share this out. This channel is constantly suppressed. Uh, I would uh, highly recommend you sign up for my email list uh, and uh, get updates there. Uh, I would highly recommend that you subscribe to me on Rockfin. Uh, and if you can become a member on Rockfin because it not just helps me, but it helps all of the content creators uh, on that platform. Um, and uh, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. Uh, so go there, check that out, uh, and thank you guys so much for tuning in.